Fifteen billion dollars. The amount Canadian students are in debt. Eight percent. The rate of program completion by students who have student loans. And at least one in four. The number of non-enrolled students that state financial issues as to not furthering into post-secondary education. And to break these statistics today, we feel as if on side proposition that we have to propose a resolution today. This House believes that post-secondary education should be free. Now, in side proposition today, we're going to be bringing forth this case in three main contentions. Firstly, I'm going to be talking about the right to education. Secondly, about the breaking of the poverty cycle. And thirdly, about the system of meritocracy. Now, to make this case a little more clear, we're going to define some um, key terms today. Now, this house is defined as Canada. Post-secondary education is defined as any public educational system after high school and free education is available exclusively to Canadian citizens. Now, we, we believe that the model today is following the Nordic system in the fact that we would be presenting post-secondary education free to Canadian citizens. Now, we believe on that proposition that we have to focus on quality over quantity. Now, without further ado, let's go into my first contention about the right to education. Now, fundamentally, we don't think it's fair that if a person has all the same qualifications and credentials as someone else, they should be denied opportunity simply because they don't have enough money to do so. Why is university so good? Why is it so recommended in our society today? Well, we think university is that crucial stepping stone to one's future. We think it's the place one can find out what to do. But more importantly, we think it's the way people are hired. We think it's the way people have a more successful career and a more successful future. Let's look at the example of a 90% average student to a 95 average student. Now, obviously, in the college system, that 95 average student should be accepted. But we don't see so happening because of their financial state, sure. But we see that in today's society, there are people who are unable to pay this additional tax who will never be going to university. Do they still have to pay this tax despite they will never be benefited? Okay, thank you for that POI. Now on taxation, we think that we pay taxes to benefit the whole of society, right? And by paying this tax, this not only benefits people immediately, but in the long run, because more people in the lower and middle income families will be able to go to colleges, which will then benefit them in the long run and our society in a long run. Now let's look at the example of the country Finland. Finland has quietly built the world's most successful public educational system. Finnish students have constantly been at the top of international surveys and tests and exams and rankings over the past decade, a status earned by completely going against the grain of conventional education thinking. And the interesting thing is that their post-secondary education is free, and we think that we have to follow that model on side proposition, proposition today. Now let's look at the second point about breaking the cycle of poverty. Now currently, these poor families are stuck in a vicious cycle. The high cost of post-secondary education is in BC, specifically, is a significant barrier to the attendance by lower and middle income students. The parents are in low jobs, and so they cannot for afford their children to go to university. And then when these children grow up, they cannot afford to attend their children to university. And we see that poverty cycle continuing on and continue on as an eternal cycle, unless we do something about it here today. Sure. Isn't that true that there are already financial aid and scholarships and student loans that we do offer to these students? OK, thank you. We see that something like a scholarship is the exception. We don't see every single person from the poverty line is getting a scholarship or is getting a student loan because that not only puts a burden on them, but puts another debt um, concern on their lives, which I'm actually going to be uh, talking about right now. Now, we see that students who also acquire large debt, putting themselves through school, are unlikely to think about changing society. When you trap a person in the system of debt, they can't afford the time to think. And the whole idea behind going to school, we think on that proposition, is for one, to learn, but to also make a difference. We think that that's more important than our college students worrying about loaning more money. Canadian research suggests that debt levels have a direct impact on success in post-secondary education. One study found that as student loans and debt rose from less than $1,000 a year to more than $10,000 a year, that program completion rate fell from 59% to 8%. We see a huge decrease in people going into this public educational system. Now, we think that with this idea of debt, the debt not only puts a burden on these students, but also another um, 
like no deadline and more interest because of the debt rising and rising every single year. So what have I talked to you about today? Now firstly I've explained the right to education and how we have to promote equality throughout our, like, our society. We feel as if it shouldn't matter where you come from, especially with the lottery of birth. We see that today it's a very influential society. We see that rich people are going to college. We see that we have to like um, expand the horizon of people and students being accepted into colleges to make the post-secondary education free. We feel as if that equality and right to education is extremely important in our society because it benefits the individual immediately and also the society in the long run. And I've also talked about how we have to break this cycle of poverty, ladies and gentlemen. This cycle of poverty is eternal and keeps um, increasing and increasing as we see the poverty line getting lower and lower and, and more people being in poverty um, today in our society. So we feel as if we have to um, allow the people and like poor and impoverished um, families to be able to have a more bigger opportunity in their futures and in their lives, which is why we know that we have to propose the resolution today. Thank you.